This ain't advice. I'm not your advisor. And as they say in the biz, slap that subscribe button. We're only about 10 hundred thousand away from a million. We're almost there. We got some more questions. We got a little scotch left. Let's take a look. Should I tell my old employer what my new employer is paying me? Your old employer wants to go over why you're leaving. You feel like they'll ask what you'll be getting paid should you share. Your instinct says no, but you're not sure what to say. I should do whatever you want. If you don't want to tell them, you should say you don't want to tell them. You are certainly under no obligation or expectation to share what you're getting paid. But if you want to, uh, you, I mean, you don't even need to give a number. You can just say substantially more than what I was being paid before. But I would do whatever you want. I mean, you don't even need to go over why you're leaving with them. There's no requirement to do that. So you're doing them a favor just by helping them figure out why good employees are leaving. So follow your heart. Do what you think. Stock advice. You own 156 shares of Apple at 87 bucks equals market value of 50,000. Wait, hang on. Okay, that says 321. Okay, so 156 times 321 is 50,000. Do you mean you bought them at 87? Is that what you're saying? All right, that's probably what you're saying. I get it. <clears throat> Current market value of your Apple stock is $50,000. Your only other account is a Roth. It's got $700 in it. You're 29, you make $66,000 a year. It's gonna go up to 69, nice. You'll also likely get a promotion, $16,000. Guaranteed state pension, New York state deferred comp. 17, and school loan debt, refinance at 4%, nice. Car just paid off, girlfriends got some cash in the bank. You got a little bit of car. Debt is a car. She has a car debt. I get it. You plan on getting married. You want to buy a home. What are your best moves? Ideally, the money will be saved and invested for retirement, but you might use some no more than 15 or 20K to put down on a home. All right. So this is tricky because I got to assume a few things. I got to assume a lot of things, actually. I'll show you the rest of this. Um, so I assume what you're saying is you bought this in a taxable account. And the value's gone from 87 bucks a share to 320 bucks a share. So anything you sell, you're gonna have to pay capital gains on. And that's the big problem. I think that's what you're saying. Plus, if you're in New York, especially New York City, that'd be some pretty high taxes. Let's just do a quick and dirty. All right, so I got $36,000 of capital gain. Hard to guess exactly what bracket you're in because you're single and I don't know if you're in the city or not, but let's say you're paying something like 15% federal and 8% state, so times 0.23, so it's not so bad. You probably pay something like eight, nine thousand dollars if you sold it all. It's not tax advice. All right, so you'd have to pay tax if you sold it all. I mean, do you really want to keep all this Apple stock? How long are you going to hold it forever until you retire? Maybe. I mean, it's not the worst idea if you said you want to buy a home in a few years. You're just going to keep holding this and sell whatever you want to sell at that point. But just like you bought the stock at 87 bucks, the stock could go back down. It doesn't need to stay at 320 So, you know, if you wanted to lock in the ability to do that, you should probably sell it. You should probably think about if this is a good year to sell or if next year is a good year to sell for your tax position personally. But it's the only investment you got. It's totally non-diversified. It's sort of a crazy thing to do. My palms are getting a little bit sweaty just thinking about the fact that you have uh, $50,000 in one stock and $700 of other investments. It's, it's pretty wild. Although, I guess maybe you're saying you have... Uh, You have deferred comp, maybe that's invested in something. Anyway, um, that's pretty scary. I wouldn't want to be there, but good work, good investment. I'd probably start trimming some of it, be ready to buy a home, pay for a, pay for a wedding, etc. 
California? I assume it's California, not Canada. You didn't know about quarterly taxes for freelance work and just include your freelance income in your annual return. Is that okay? You are woefully ignorant when it comes to tax matters. It's probably okay, by the way. Hope we can help you figure out if you're in the clear. Your full-time student is working two jobs, one normal job. Unfortunately, you weren't aware that freelancers are supposed to be filing their taxes quarterly. So when you followed your regular annual tax return, you just included all the income. From a legal standpoint, am I in the clear? Well, I'm not an attorney. But what the IRS cares about is that you pay all your taxes. If you pay all your taxes and you didn't pay them quarterly, then you might pay a penalty. You might pay some interest on that penalty, but it's not really a problem as long as the man's getting his money. Uh, so let's read it. Your tax return this year with your new freelance income was much lower. Oh, you meant refund. Um, if you're playing the drinking game, have a drink. Would be correct to assume that's just to be expected because of freelance income taxes being taken out and penalties you may have had for not filing your freelance taxes quarterly. Well, if you're getting a refund, you're probably not actually paying any penalties. Probably means you were withholding more than you needed from the other job. So I don't see any way you'd be paying any penalties. But yes, that's exactly right. You just report that 1099 income, that freelance work on a return. And there was also W-2 return on it. It's just going to basically crunch all the math together and then say how much you owe and how much you withheld. And if you were supposed to have paid a lot more quarterlies, you'd have to be paying money in. And that's where penalties and interest would come into it. But yeah, it sounds like you're in the clear. Sounds like you're good. The real time you got to know about this and be paying quarterlies is when you're doing it full time, when it's a lot of income uh, and when you're not already withholding relatively high amount in a W-2 job. So Sounds like you're in the clear to me.